Hello friends and welcome to my guide on how to micro in Dota 2. I know this can be quite intimidating for a lot of players, but we're going to break it down to fundamentals, tips and tricks here to make it as simple as possible. We're going to jump right into hotkeys and options. I know it's not very exciting, but this is really the heart of micro is to have a comfortable setup that you can do quickly. So we have to talk about it. Beginning with select hero, you probably already have this bound and then select all controlled units or select all other units under advanced hotkeys. I would recommend having at least one of these on a button comfortable to press a lot. You don't have to have both. I typically just use this one or you could do the other one. Both could be useful and they have their place, but at least one will get you by. Control groups by default, next unit is tab. Try changing it if you find this awkward because you're gonna have to press control and shift a lot and then to put in tab as well and then issue attack commands and spells, I find a bit awkward. So for me, rebinding this to something more comfortable helped a lot. Feel free to try it if you'd like. You don't need previous unit bound because by default, if you press and hold control and whatever this is, it will go backwards. And I never use this functionality anyways. For control groups, uh, I'm blocking it with my camera. I get by with like one to three for most heroes along with the other commands we talked about. Use whatever you want. These are just for my weird hotkeys that I prefer. Do whatever is comfortable for you. Under advanced hotkeys, you can find other control groups. If you do want to get into some very like nifty tricks, this is where you find it. Under options, these are settings to change the auto attack preference of your main hero. And then under advanced options, these are for your summons or illusions. I recommend keeping it the same uh, for both your main hero and your summons, but just to show you the difference, if you have it set to standard and you issue a move command by Lena, for example, I will just stand here because I never issued an attack command and I'm set to standard auto attack. If you set it to always, you can move to Lena and then he will immediately start attacking even without that auto attack command. If I move past Lena, I will still walk past her, but when I reach the destination, I will start attacking. Compare this to an attack command, then as soon as he runs into Lena, he starts attacking. You can get a similar functionality if you have it set to standard, but it requires more button pressing. So like I could move past Lena and then issue a shift attack command so that he will start attacking whatever he finds there. So it's just a matter of more button presses or not. I find standard to give me more control, but I recommend you keep it the same because for example, especially for illusion heroes, if some are set to always and some are set to standard, your illusions will just start attacking right away and it's gonna reveal which are illusions and which are real, which is no good if you're an illusion hero. Unified orders with control allows you to send commands to units that you control but haven't got selected. So for example, these are mine. I'm only moving my hero though. If I press and hold control and give movement commands, everyone moves. However, I don't actually recommend you use this because it disables a trick I'm about to show you. And if you want to do this without the setting, you just use your hotkey to select all controlled units and then move this way. So you get the same functionality without preventing yourself from using this trick, which is that when you have all of these selected and you press tab or whatever you bind it to, you'll notice that it highlights different units or groups of units. Now, if I press and hold control and issue a command, I will only send a command to whatever is highlighted in white in this selection group. This is really useful for illusion heroes because you can individually select illusions to send to different uh, camps, to different lanes, to farm out. For summons heroes, it's not as useful typically, but if you combine it with this console command, this is by default set to true. This is why all the treants are selected as a group. If we set it to false, when we do the same thing, we select all our units and press tab, you'll notice I'm now individually selecting treants. We can now combine this with this control trick by pressing and hold control. I'm gonna now individually send commands, tab, select another one, tab, select another one. I'm just holding control during this whole time. And now I'm sending all of these treants to different spots. Control groups last between games. So you only have to set it up once, do it in a demo lobby and you should be good, but sometimes it's a little buggy. So do it again in a real game and you'll be fine. To actually do it, select the units you want, press and hold control, and then press the hot key that you have bound. So I'm gonna press four. And now when I press four, I have all of these treants. If you want to add someone in like this Helm Dom creep, press and hold control and shift, and then press the same hotkey, so four. Now when I press four, we've got all of them. If you want to remove this Helm Dom creep, you're out of luck, there's no command for that. So in one of two ways, either do the same thing, select the units, press control four to override that group, and now you'll only have the treants, or press your hotkey, you select all of them, press and hold shift, left click, 
that range creep and now create a new control group. If you don't create the control group, this just deselected this range creep. It is temporary. If I press four, you'll notice he's still there. I have just deselected them, but when I press four, they're still in the control group. You have to deselect him and then control four, create the new control group again without him, and there you go. Control shift adding in units is really useful if you want, say, four to be your helm dom button but you get different creeps and it's not always going to be four, right? Right now he's bound to four, but if I get a hell bear, that hell bear is not bound to four. So then I control four him to the group and now I overrode this guy. So if I add him in, then as I bounce between different creeps, they're all under the control group four, but only one ever exists at a time. So it only selects that one. You could use select all other units, but if you ever pick up illusions or things like that, you might accidentally select those first. And then you were trying to cast a spell with your centaur, but it chose to like highlight this nature's profit illusion instead. And that's kind of why I don't use that one. I just use control all and then individual control groups for like different summons. There's one finicky limitation to control groups. And that is that they only work for types of units. I don't know how to describe this because it's not like a, a written rule somewhere. It's just something I've noticed. So like, let's bind this guy to control four and this one to alt four, or sorry, four and alt four. So you'll notice they're separate right now. And if I summon more treants, they actually continue to remain separate. If they die and we summon new treants, if I press four or alt four, it is just a treants button. There's no way to have persisting individual hotkeys for units that are exactly the same as each other. Like treants are all the same uh, to each other. Someone like Invoker though has unique summons. And I think it's because every time he does it, there's a set amount and they kill the old ones. Whereas like treants or Beastmaster boars, they add on. These you can set differently. So right now I have four and alt four bound to these. And if I summon new ones, they continue to remain on individual hotkeys. Manta also has unique illusions. So you can bind these to like uh, four and alt four, and they'll always be separate even as you use them again. But something like Conjure Image creates illusions that just add in, and these are all the same. So temporarily we could set this one to four and this one to alt four. And as I create new uh, images, these are still unique, but after they all die and we start using this spell again, it doesn't really matter. They'll all be four, they'll all be alt four. So I don't know, you'll, you'll just have to play around this with different heroes, but you'll find that some, some of these hotkeys do not last through because they are binding a group, a type of unit, like all conjure images are on four as soon as you bind a single one to four. One exception is Naga Siren, and I think it's because every time she uses Mirror Image, the old ones die, and each illusion here is unique. Even without the console command, you'll notice I can select through all of these illusions differently, just like you can with Manta. And so if I bind one to four, this is always the four illusion. Even as I create new ones, that four illusion is over here. Phantom Lancer can't do this with his ult. So for example, we can bind one to four for now, but once all these illusions die and we start creating new illusions, you'll find that this illusion's four and this illusion's four, we're all four illusions on this blessed day. So he can't do it with his ult, but he can do it with Doppelganger because Doppelganger creates two unique types of illusions one that takes a regular amount of damage but deals none, and one that takes 500 bonus damage. So this is how you'll see Phantom Lancers do this trick. First, you have to figure out which is which, so let's attack. So that one took a lot of damage. This one took a regular amount of damage. Let's bind this one to four. Now, when we use Doppelganger, the four hotkey is always the hotkey with the illusion that uh, takes a regular amount of damage. And this is how people will do jukes because they'll use doppelganger once they'll send this illusion this way They'll send these two like somewhere else and people think like oh, he's taking a regular amount of damage, right? He, this is the real one, but it's not it's just an illusion doppelganger though Does not kill the old ones. So now when I press four both of these actually have the the regular damage This is where the control command is really useful because now I can just send one even though I'm selecting a whole group of regular illusions I can send just the one away to trick the enemy and then move the rest of the units somewhere else. I won't go through every single example here, but go ahead, try it for a hero you want to play. And you might notice that sometimes you can set up hotkeys that last forever for specific illusions or summons, and sometimes it doesn't. 
And there's, I don't have a way around it. Either you have to set the hotkey every single time you want to use it, or you're just going to have to get used to what you have available to you. You want to use a mix of control and shift to send individual or chain commands respectively. And that's how you're going to look like a micro god. For example, we have Naga Siren. This works with really any illusions or summons. If we want them to push down this lane, but we just issue an attack command here, they're just going to cut diagonally and totally ignore the lane. So we issue an attack command down here and then shift attack command down the lane through the minimap. You can also move your camera if you prefer, but the minimap is actually easier. So now they'll walk down the lane and walk this way. And because it's an attack command, any creeps they run into, they will attack. Or maybe you want to farm a bunch of different jungle camps and the lane. So what we're going to do is we're going to select all our new illusions. We're going to press and hold control and through the minimap or through the screen, right? We're going to issue individual commands. So control attack, tab, control attack, tab, control attack, control attack. And you see all my illusions are moving to different parts of the map. We can use a combination of control and shift to send out our illusions. So we start with control by splitting them up on the map. And then my hero is busy right now. So now we can, why don't you attack this camp? Shift command, attack that camp. You go check Roche. You farm this and then go this way. Back to our hero. What are we up to? Let's go back. I'm scared, right? And now we can go check on our illusions. They're all shift queued up to different places. I mean, he's just scouting. So as they finish camps, they'll move on to the next camp without us having to do anything beyond that. Now, I mean, you have to do it the one time, but that way you don't have to like keep going back to each one. Like, are you done yet? Okay, now you move. Like, are you done yet? No. The shift queue allows you to set all that up and then just forget it. Go back to like looking around, see what you need to do, move in your own hero, stuff like that. One trick you can do is to body block with your summons, and that sounds a lot harder than it actually is. If you try to micro both, that is going to be difficult. All you really need to do, though, is have your hero issue an attack command on your target, and that's it. From now on, we're just going to control the summons and have them body block, and the hero will just follow along. So all we do is this, and that hero is just going to come along. It's not as efficient as like canceling the backswing and kiting properly as Nature's Prophet, but that would be extremely difficult. If you want to go for that, feel free. But what I just showed you is a much easier application of this, and it's still pretty good. Make sure not to let your summons get killed too freely. If they get low, make sure you go ahead and deny them. They will give golden XP. The exact amount varies depending on the summon. So take a look at your own uh, wiki page of whoever hero you're playing and learn what that value is. Some aren't worth a lot, like... Uh, uh, Nature's Prophet, his treants are actually dirt cheap. So if they die, it's not a huge deal. And he can just kind of like throw them away to harass. But some like Eidolons are pretty expensive. You don't want the enemy to kill them. You can actually try to bait out the enemy when your summons get close to expiring and have them come attack. And then you just make sure, try not to feed it. You know, if you lose one or two, it's not the end of the world. But if they waste time trying to kill a summons and then they just expire, you're getting in a little bit of free damage. Not a lot in this example, but you get in some free damage. They waste some time trying to get those kills and then they just poof, they're gone. One great use of illusions and summons is to block camps from spawning really good in the first minute. If you don't want these camps to spawn, you just send a creep over the hawk. Doesn't work. Just wanted to show you that here. You can also use your summons to stack. This is where setting a temporary hotkey can work because if you try to do this, it just goes to the most recent one. Instead, I want to go to this one to do the stack at the right time and then just pull him away. So if you have a hotkey dedicated to this, you can temporarily bind him to like alt four, for example. And that way I just, uh, I can double tap this hotkey and pop straight to him to make stacking easier and then snap right back to my hero without having to like otherwise there's no like you could do it like this as well you can like select the group and then double tap with your mouse the one you want to go to but if you want to just use the keyboard you can do that you can temporarily bind things if you're new to playing summons don't forget that some of the jungle creeps will now use spells when you bring too many units you can actually proc these effects by sending a certain amount of your units first and then send the rest in if you want to avoid uh, your units taking damage or at least yourself you don't really need to get like centaur stomped or hellbear smashed for free you can also use summons to do things that you're too scared of so for example if i think people are waiting here to kill me but i don't want to miss these last hits just send in the creeps and then you wait by the trees or somewhere safe close enough for xp range and then essentially you just last hit with these spiders or if you're like beast master the boars you know whatever that way you're kind of getting the best of both worlds you're playing it safe you're still getting farm and if they do decide to jump and kill your summons sure you lose a bit of summons gold to the enemy but you're not dead so like whatever you can also use your summons to scout things out if you're scared so broodmother can send her spiderlings out we can send them all over the map like so that way we can see anyone teleporting into these areas and we can use the rest of the spiders to take the tower we can keep an eye on the mini map to see like any rotations coming in 
You can also use your summons to drag creep waves around, which has a variety of applications in the beginning of the game. You could be doing this to get good equilibrium. You could double up the wave if you don't want to like drag it all the way back to your side because maybe your summon is going to die too soon. You just drag them around backwards, and then when your summons die, that you like doubled up the wave. You can drag creeps away when you're trying to push this tower. Um, if your your team has fed, maybe you fed as well. Your summons are still alive. You can do some of this creep dragging stuff to buy your team time so that the enemy can't push into high ground because you're using your your stuff to just like drag creeps and circles back here for a minute uh, there's lots of applications for this um, so be creative but just remember that it is something you can do as a final random note there's a couple extra things you can bind to control groups that you may not think of as usual summons so plague wards from venomancer uh, serpent wards from shadow shaman witch doctors ultimate you can direct its attacks to specific targets things like that give it a shot uh, with the different heroes you play you might find you get a little extra control over your hero which allows you to do just a bit more i hope you found this helpful let me know if there's anything i didn't address that you've got questions on leave it in the comments and i'll do my best to answer Thank you for watching, and I'll see you in another video.